Breakfast with Dikhan Mukhzaneke. What a pleasure to uh, have him here as a guest after the release of his memoir uh, that's called My Own Liberator. It's absolutely fantastic to have you here. Welcome again and thanks for spending your morning with us. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks so, for having me. I, I wanted to ask you before we, we end the, the discussion because there's so much more to read because you go into a lot of detail about uh, your, uh, your, your, your time in prison. But what was it like visiting your mom? Because I know your mom spoke at your farewell, um, or she, she, she was interviewed at your farewell when yes. you left uh, being the Deputy Chief Justice in May this year. And she spoke about the fact that she used to cry when she'd go and see you. Uh, if she saw you upset, that would yes. upset you. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, how did you remain strong? What was it like when your mom came to visit you? I mean, at one stage, all four of her children were in jails at some part in South Africa. Yes, that is true. I mean, um, I think as a family, I mean, the notions of, of agency, of, of, of taking charge of one's life, of um, simple examples, and I wouldn't be long. My mother would say, hey, you've got to wash the dishes. Sorry, boys. You have got to clean up your room. Sorry, have you washed your undie? When you shower, you do you wash your undie. Yeah. And w so she was a mother with four boys, and she was a matriarch in many ways. Uh, so she suits central. But when we were young, we thought the strong one was my father. Until came Robin Island and I came, came the detention of all of my brothers. All of them were detained when I was out already. So I was there to support. Yeah. But during my, my stay on Robben Island, they would come together. My dad would usually sob endlessly, seeing his son in prison clothes, that dirty green, that army green of those years. They put orange now, which looks a little better yeah. than that horrible green. And he would hardly know how to handle the situation. He felt so helpless. And my mom would be the one who'd say, it's going to be painful, son. It's going to be long and hard. But who says it comes easily? Mm. Put your head down. You've got to go through this, son. You've got to soak up the pain. Because life, life does throw curved balls at you. Yeah. And, and somehow she was the, the strong one, the one who held it all together and shored me up emotionally. Uh, and something I want to pass on to, to young people and to people generally to say, life does present difficult moments. And when they do come, we have to stay true to that cause, put our heads down and try and find positive things to do. Yeah. I decided studies was going to be the way, not only formal studies, but I wanted to understand better what are the elements of a just society. Why are we fighting to replace apartheid and colonialism with what? Yes. And, and, and that stayed with me for quite quite a long time. Mm. We're going we're gonna to talk a little bit more, and I also want to want to get your interpretation as to uh, your, I mean, you are the Chancellor of its University, so I could never let you go without talking about the circumstances that we're seeing our students going through right now. Yes. But I, I, I'm going to get there in in I'm a while. Sure but I, I want to I want to get to meeting your wife as well because I think that's an important part of your story, a very important part of your story. How did you meet? I, yeah, it's quite, it's quite a love story, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, on Robben Island towards the end, we're allowed to receive magazines. And I received the drum magazine. I'm sure drum will be happy to me to mention it. Yeah? <laughs> Very. And she was the cover girl of drum magazine. She had written a play called Pride of the Family. And it has been shown, it's a story of a young nurse who gets into a nurse's college and loses her way with all the fun around Johannesburg at Baragwanath and so on. And she lays down a number of things and says, no, no, you don't do it, girl. Home wants you. Get through the course. Be a great professional. It's a caring profession. So it does that kind of play. And I read again, she was from Atridgeville, yeah. my hometown. So I penned a letter to her. Hi there. You don't know me, perhaps, but I'm so-and-so. I'm a prisoner. Nothing came back. I so you, and you weren't surprised. <laughs> Please tell me you weren't surprised. <laughs> and in those days, people would just run when you write in the, and just stems of prison. prison exactly, prison number XYZ. Prison, what all over it, and to censored. You know, they delete the parts yes. they don't like, yes. you know. 
And she never, nothing came back. And I wrote again, nothing came back. And I wrote, you know, I wrote to a friend of mine and said, hey, check it out. Who's she? Who? The one on the front on the cover. And I got the details of who she was in the letter. But I sort of gave it up. You know, she never bothered even to come back. Yeah. Um, on the very day, and you see how I describe it in the book, the very day I arrived from prison after 10 years, my brother comes in my IT and says to me, you've got a, a guest. And she breezes in, my goodness. Look at her pictures. She breezes in and... <sighs> she took your breath away. <laughs> <laughs> and she had some explanation about, I'm so scared. But I made the point that I know when you come out so I can at least come and greet you. Coy as ladies are, she didn't say, no, I just come to greet you. Yeah. Um, an amazing, an amazing friendship started from then. That's amazing. And, um, yeah. And then you got married, but in quite two an years later, we two got years married. married in quite an interesting way. I have some inside information because uh, one of our, our, you know, uh, which you know very well, I won't, I won't re reveal too many names, but <laughs> her, her mother was, uh, was your wife's bridesmaid. And at the ceremony, there was only a picture of you in the church. Yes. Um, or at the ceremony, and that's how you got married because there couldn't be mass gatherings. Mm. And yes. that was, you know. At, the, at, engagement. at engagement. At engagement. Was this the engagement? The engagement, not at the wedding? yes. And my brother had to step in and, and be, you know, in the empty space, at least to say, with this ring, I uh, do I, marry you, or whatever, exactly. I intend to marry you. Yeah, yeah. At, at the graduate. Yes, it, it was the bizarre end of apartheid where they wouldn't even give you permission to go attend your own engagement party. Unbelievable. It was just st stupid stuff of the past. Just the way it was. Um, I'm going to ask you to stay on again uh, because we don't want to let you go. There's just too much more to speak about. I, I want to speak about the, the education, your time at uh, Wits University, what's happening at the moment, sure. and also what it felt like to be overlooked as Chief Justice. And, you know, did that, what, what effect did it have on you? I'm going to ask you that and a lot more. So let's uh, take a break. I'll bring you the news at 8 and then we'll continue this conversation. Do stay tuned.